we're going to talk a little bit about publishing because I have a lot of people come up to me asking me about publishing and how it works. Who do you have to sign up for? How do you get your royalties? How do you get your money? This video is going to talk about just royalties in general. So I wanted to show you guys this just to educate you on how the whole process works. Okay, so here is the anatomy of a song. There is a 100% ownership in a song, unless you're going by BMI standards, and then there is a 200% ownership in a song. Now, with the 100% model, 50% of the song. So just to clarify, ASCAP has a 100% scale and BMI has a 200% scale. She'll explain it. Belongs to the songwriters and the remaining 50% of the song belongs to the publishers. With the 200% model, 100% ownership of the song belongs to the songwriters and the remaining 100% ownership of the song belongs to the publishers. And this is true for every single song. Now, the word songwriter or writer when it comes to royalty shares means any person who contributed to the creation of the song. So if you are a writer and you wrote the lyrics or you wrote the melody or if you are a producer and you produce the song or you made the beat for the song, you are all considered songwriters and you all have a writer share in the ownership of the song. There is no such thing as a producer share, producer royalties, composer share. You are all writers. Well, at least that's how it is here in the US. I know that there are many non-US countries, mostly in Europe, that have the author share, which is the writer share, the composer share, which is the producer share, and also the publisher share. And this is just because they have different laws in their country that recognize different rights within the music industry than here in the USA. So I just wanted to point that out because I know I do have some international subscribers out there shout out to you guys and also because there are many u.s musicians who buy beats online and a lot of the time it comes from people uh, outside of the u.s so i wanted to point that out to you guys now getting into the writer share versus the publisher share whatever percentage you own as a writer is the same exact percentage you own as a publisher so if you have 25 percent writer share that means that there you also have 25 percent publisher share the writer share and the publisher share are always directly linked every single time. That means that you cannot have 25% writer share and a 50% publisher share. Well, this can happen, but only if the publisher is representing multiple writers. So if you have a 25% writer share and your co-writer has a 25% writer share and the publisher is representing both of you, then yes, the publisher is going to have 50% share because his share is uh, directly linked to your 25% and directly linked to their 25%. So that's how you would have different shares, but the writer share is directly connected to the publisher share. Now, you do not need to be signed to a publisher or have a publishing deal to be able to receive your publisher share of the royalties. If you have your own publishing company, then you can get the publisher share that's connected to your writer share. Or if you don't have a publishing company, it's just you by yourself, then you can still do this too. You are considered self-published because you are self-publishing yourself and you are entitled to the publisher share that is connected to your writer share. Now, to even be able to collect any of these royalties, you must be signed up with a performing rights organization, a PRO, and if you need help choosing which PRO is best for you, then I have a video that you can watch right up here and uh, it will help you to know the differences and benefits with these PROs. Okay, so now I am going to get into royalty splits and how you should be splitting the shares in a song. And I am so sorry to tell you, well maybe I'm not sorry to tell you at all, but there is no standard in how to decide what percentage of a song someone gets. None. This is just a business decision that must be made amongst yourselves as business people. Some people decide to split their royalties equally amongst each other. Some people decide that the producer is going to be getting half of the royalties and then the other co-writers split the rest uh, amongst themselves. Some people really just try to figure out, break down who contributed what to the song and that will end up with people having like 2% of a song, 11% of a song, 7% of a song. So there is truly no standard in royalty splits. With that being said, don't be a douche. Do not just be greedy and try to get the highest percentage of royalties that you can get just because you want the bulk of the royalties. That is a horrible way to do business, especially with people who have helped you to create this song. If someone has helped you create the song, then they deserve some parts 
of the royalties. And I'm saying this because I know that there are a lot of people who will buy a beat from someone and expect to not pay any royalties to the producer after that because they already paid for the beat. But you are paying for the exclusive use of that beat. You're not paying for anything else. And like I said, the producer who made the beat still contributed to the creation of the song, which means that they deserve the royalties that come from the creation of that song. It's very simple. It's just like if somebody samples a song. Yes, maybe the sample is a very small part of the song, but guess what? That song would not be that song without that small sample. So they contributed to the creation of the song, and that is why when people sample songs, they get royalties for it. And someone who is absolutely amazing at making sure that every single person who contributed to the creation of the song gets their royalty shares is Kanye West. Yes, I know it's ironic because he's like considered the king of the douchebags. Not to me, but he is completely not a douchebag, the complete opposite of a douchebag when it comes down to splitting royalties with his co-writers, with his producers with anyone who contributed to the creation of the song. You will always see in Kanye West songs that there are so many songwriters. I'll put some examples up on the screen because he is always giving credit, always splitting royalties with everyone. It doesn't matter how big or small they played, he is always giving them their credit and their ownership shares in the song. And with this last Kanye song, The Good Life, I just wanted to give you guys an example of how there is truly no standard for splitting royalties. You see here that there are eight writers, seven of them are BMI, and BMI controls 75%, so that means that Quincy Jones is getting 25% writer share, while the rest of the seven are splitting the rest of the 75% in some way. Here is another example, a Taylor Swift song, Bad Blood. She is BMI, she has a 33% share, and there are three of them, which means that they most likely just split it equally between the three of them, with each of them getting a 33% share. And here is another random song that I have no idea what it is, I just looked it up, but it is by Dej Loaf, and DJ Mustard is the producer on the song, DJ Mustard is BMI. We see here that BMI controls 11%, which means that DJ Mustard has an 11% share in this song for his role as a producer. So as you can see, there is no standard way for splitting royalties. How many of you guys are signed up for BMI or ASCAP, CSAC, SOCAN? And one thing I want you to learn is if you make music and you plan on making money or making a living making music, you need to sign up for a PRO. I know more about the US than other countries, but if you're a US citizen, you should either be an ASCAP member, a BMI member, or a CSAC member. Definitely start doing your research immediately on that. As an ASCAP member, basically whenever you go to register a song, ASCAP works on 100 percent scale 50 percent goes to the songwriters and 50 percent goes to the publishers if you sign up for ASCAP you should have a writer account and a publisher account because that ensures you get the entirety of your check if you register a song and it blows up if you're registered as a, both a writer and a publisher you're gonna see the entirety of that check on the writer's side of it if you wrote lyrics in the song if you perform the song if you made the beat to the song, if you wrote the melody of the song, that is your writer portion. On the publisher side, if you're self-published, if you don't have a publisher that collects on your behalf, you should have a publisher account with BMI or ASCAP or CSAC or whatever. The way it works is, say as a producer, you own 50% of the writer's portion. If you own 50% and you're self-published, you also own 50% of the publisher's portion. So whatever your slice is on the writer's side, that carries over over to the publisher side, it's equal. If you have a publisher who collects on your behalf, they will collect your publishing. And I'll get to that more in a second. ASCAP, you go to ASCAP.com. That's where you can go to sign up for an account. If you don't have a PRO account, make sure you sign up as both a writer and a publisher with ASCAP. BMI, you just go to BMI.com and you can do the same. Another thing she didn't talk about, publishing administration. I use a company called SongTrust. You go to SongTrust.com and what a publishing administrator does is you put your songs into your SongTrust account. They will register it with your PRO. There's an agreement that happens between your publishing administrator and your PRO. So I'm with ASCAP and I'm also with SongTrust to administer my publishing. So every time I register a song into SongTrust, they also automatically register it with ASCAP. So I only have to register the song with SongTrust. A publishing administrator collects 
royalties from overseas, royalties that your PRO might not collect or doesn't collect from other societies like SOCAN and COMCA. SongTrust collects from other societies outside of the United States. Question is, when you have a song, how do you work out splits? Say me and you are making a beat. The way I operate is if we're in the studio together and we make a song, the approach I take is 50-50. I get 50% you get 50%. So we're gonna split our writer portion of the whole song 50-50. Other people are different, but I find that that's the easiest way to do it. If you're in my Discord and you're collabing with someone, you guys both have ownership, and I think 50-50 is a good way to go about it. It might be different if you just send someone a sample. There are gray areas, but the bottom line is whatever that is, it needs to be discussed. The way I recommend doing it is via email because in email you have records. Before the song's even released or day it's released, you guys put into the system what the splits are. That's important. And I recommend doing that through email and writing out a deal memo. A deal memo acts as a contract. Like she said in the video, Tinya Coates. Like she said, talk with your collaborators. Be cool about it. Don't try to just soak up most of the royalties. Be fair about it because if you're fair when you're distributing royalties, if you have an abundant mentality, you're just gonna create a better vibe for everyone involved. Don't try to siphon royalties for yourself. Try to be collaborative in the process. If, if a lot of people contributed to the song, try to share the wealth and be reasonable, be fair. Say you have a conversation with an artist on the phone and it's very non-formal, there's a conversation. Maybe your manager talks with the artist manager, for example. After you get off the phone, say that the deal is 50-50 PRO split. The thing my lawyer taught me to do, which I'm gonna now teach you to do, is the minute you get off the phone or the minute your manager gets off the phone, they should send an email with a deal memo explaining the things you talked about on the phone. If you do that, you now have in writing what was discussed because I've been in situations before where myself, my management, my attorney has got off the phone with the other party that I'm doing the song with and there was a misunderstanding in terms. Or they go back on what they say and they give you less than what you agreed to on the phone. That's why a deal memo is so important because there's an agreement that has to happen via email. That's a binding contract. So that's what I recommend. Decap.